Welcome back everybody, Boyd here with you. Well, here's another update on the uh, Walmart exclusive Robbie the Robot put up by Goldlock. I was informed since I made the first video about this that uh, this is a reissue from originally Trendmasters from a few years ago. I actually have a couple Trendmasters uh, toys. I have their uh, classic Jupiter 2 and the uh, three foot tall B9 robot. Those have, those have been excellent. They've lasted all, the, all this time and never had a problem with them. But the original Trendmasters robot here had a, a power cord coming off with a remote that operated the walking action. So they've, they've uh, eliminated that and upgraded some of the lights and sound effects on it since then. So um, just thought we'd talk about that a little bit. Now you can see the one on the right is the one that I've spent some time working on modifying it. I completely repainted them to the correct gunmetal gray versus this uh, black plastic that you see here. It really makes a huge difference. It looks almost exactly like it does in the movie now. Uh, changed some of the details up in here, uh, mainly, mainly just by doing some paint work. As I talked about in the opening video, all the correct detail is in here, uh, in his uh, dome. The dome is, um, looking at the movie, It's it's got a slightly different radius to it right here in this curve right here. But it's it's barely noticeable. You'll have to be somebody who's a pure... Robbie the robot fan to, to notice it. Casual people are just not going to notice it at all. And you probably wouldn't have noticed it unless I pointed it out. So somebody mentioned that too. But uh, it's not too bad at all. But um, so uh, I want to say a shout out before I go any further too to uh, Robot Hut again. That's all one word, Robot Hut. I'll put that on the screen real quick here for you. His YouTube channel has the videos on how to do the mods on this. Uh, it's really pretty simple. The actual mods themselves. Um, Part of it involves fixing the lighting, and I'm going to show you the issues that we fixed here, and then the walking action, too. Um, now, as he talks about, sometimes out of the box, these things walk perfectly straight. Sometimes they don't. They'll either hook to the left or the right, and the reason why is a couple of issues with the uh, roller wheels on the bottom. Uh, but I'm going to go from top to bottom and uh, cover everything for you to talk about what I modded. So with mine, what I did here is I completely disassembled it, took uh, about 20 screws out of it, Followed his little guide there on some of the stuff about taking this apart. Now, he made a special tool to pull these uh, weapons deflector parts off here. I'll, I'll use this one as an example. Uh, he made some 3D printed clamps that go on here because these guys are like on here like you wouldn't believe. There's a, there's a metal rod that goes through there and uh, connects both of them. And on one end of it, or maybe on both ends of it, they, uh, they put a, like a knurled or, you know, it's like threads, but they're not threads. So they won't unscrew. And they're like pressed in there. And he says it's because of, uh, you know, so children can't pull those parts off and uh, maybe swallow them or whatever. But um, uh, they're extremely tough to get off of there. And unless you can get those off, you can't get the whole top of the head apart because that's the key to how this whole thing comes apart. You have to pull these off. Then these pull off. Then the helmet can come up. This unclips. That unclips. And then you can start seeing all the screws in the top half. The screws for the lower, you know, for the torso and the legs are you know right in here um, you can see them and they're back here but the ones up on the top which you have to get this apart you got to work your way down if you're gonna modify the the lighting board um, so that was the biggest pain in the butt part right there now what I wound up doing is I had a pair of pliers here that uh, let me grab them for you really quick the teeth actually kind of really uh, matched up really well with that and so instead of putting the uh, the pliers right on there. I took a couple of small pieces of rubber and I stuck them on there and then, you know, use that so it didn't smash it or whatever or, or gouge it. And I was able to uh, hold on really hard with my fingers on this side and just kind of pull and twist with the pliers and got them apart. It was, it was a real uh, effort. But uh, once you clear that, everything else is like easy peasy on this. It's mainly just kind of um, uh, where you got to really pay attention to how everything comes apart because... Uh, the parts aren't mirrored, you know what I mean? Well, they are mirrored. They're they're opposite of each other. So like the cams and everything that are in his legs and the way that the uh, servo part works in the center, you have to make sure you get all that lined back up and correct. And uh, if you put one cam on the wrong side or whatever, it's not going to work right. So what I did is I took one leg apart at a time and then uh, checked it and put it back together and then got used to it and then went ahead and took apart the whole thing. But I disassembled the entire thing and uh, completely repainted it. Now, all I did, you can see this one on the left here out of the box has just this plain uh, black plastic, which you can see a huge difference that it makes here. Um, it only not only changes the color, but 
to accurate to the movie, but it uh, hides a world of sins here because you know raw plastic. You got you got little scuff marks, you got little uh, swirls in the plastic and stuff like that, and that all goes away when you repaint it. So this is what I use to repaint it. This is the uh, Folk Art Gunmetal Gray number sixty six seven e six six seven e, um, and all I did was I uh, once I got the whole thing disassembled. I um, scuffed it with some double lot steel wool and, uh, you know, because it got into all these little nooks and crannies and everything. And then uh, I was careful, too, because uh, inside where his head swivels and where his waist swivels, they've got some grease in the little track in there. So when I handled it, when I was taking it all apart and everything, I, uh, you know, got greasy fingerprints all over it. So I took some isopropyl alcohol on a towel and I just wiped it all down really good, you know, and got rid of all that. And... Um, then I took it inside and washed it with some Dawn dishwashing soap. And then I sprayed all the parts just with a light mist coat with my airbrush with this. Uh, since it was already black, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't prime it or anything. I just, um, uh, you know, went over it with a really light mist, almost like you're doing the iridescent paint, you know. You're not putting a thick, full covering on it. You're just kind of dusting over it here and there, highlighting some of the, you know, spots on it. And uh, the other big thing that I did when, when I worked on it was, I'll show you the difference on the back between these two. I pointed out in that first video, you got the uh, Turner Broadcasting trademark here on the back in, in raised plastic letters. So I sanded those off and made those really smooth. I just used 320 and scuffed it down until it was flat. Then I just buffed on it really hard with the uh, double lot steel wool until it smoothed it all back out. And then down here, you can see you got a uh, this is uh, actually silk screened on here, a whole bunch of copyright numbers and stuff. So I sanded those off and uh, painted over it. So it cleaned up the back of it quite a bit. Got rid of that kind of unnecessary stuff. And um, so then once I had all the parts painted, it was time to start doing the actual mods. And uh, well, I'll talk about some more paint first too, because up here in the top, I uh, did a whole lot of repainting. You can see once you get the helmet all apart, all these parts, when you get the head in half, you can come from behind and all these pieces come out of here. The only ones that are permanently on there are these two little white little wigwags, which you know she can't even see them on this one because they're just black plastic. Um, but uh, those are cast right onto the plastic. So, But this little rocker arm assembly part comes out. These clear parts here come out. The side pieces come off. Uh, like I talked about, you know, it's hard to get the uh, little things off of there. But uh, once you do that, it all pops right apart. So I repainted it. You can see over here we got this really weird sort of orangish yellow color and then up here on the on the little dome um so i repainted that in, in the copper kind of brass color it's supposed to be same thing on the top of the little rocker shafts i painted over those with the correct copper then these little shafts that extend up are just kind of a this this kind of cheesy looking plain old plastic here so i painted those silver now the little round parts below them are supposed to be um uh, white on the faces and then silver on the side so I just uh, took some white paint and painted the faces of them and left the silver sides like they're supposed to be. Painted the two little white wigwags up there. Came back along the side here. You can see this little detail. Uh, it's just a clear plastic part. And on the actual robot on the movie, those are kind of black panels that are there. They're more flush looking too, but uh, it's a black panel and it's got the, uh, the little rings done in kind of a transparent silver almost right there. So I did that little detail, painted them black, and then painted the silver detail on there with some all clad. Repainted these, the weapons, repulsors. Um, you can see they're just this plain plastic here. And painted those with some all-clad um, aluminum. So hopefully you can see that. And then I redid the little blue part there with some Tamiya Transparent Clear in blue. And they look more like a little crystal in there now, like they should instead of just the, uh, you know, this weird color they got here. Repainted the little um, spinny things up here on the top in silver as well. They're just that plain plastic again. Painted the little dome on the top silver. This actually lights up, and then this actually spins when the when the uh, robot walks. It just stays stationary when you do it in the talk-only mode. So that's a neat little feature. So then moving on down here, uh, here's where we get into some of the mods. I'm going to do this one first for you. Welcome and you can down, see that... Boy, I'll stop the I talking, but you can see on this side here that only this LED is flashing when he's talking. The other one just comes on and stays constant on. It's not supposed to do that. They're supposed both supposed to flash. And so what uh, Robot Hut is telling you on his video, his instruction video on his channel, at the factory they soldered a couple wires in the wrong place, and it kind of varies. Like some of them they get right and some of them they're wrong. 
Um, the third one that I've got actually is right as far as that part of it. The lights flash correctly. Uh, but there's another part that he corrects when you when you change these wires. So basically you take apart the head, you take apart the torso, then you get down to the part where you can see the circuit board inside, and there are a couple of wires. Uh, every one of the wire connections are numbered, like 1 through 9, I think. And he tells you which ones to unsolder. Like at number 7, there's two black wires. You unsolder those, and then at number 8 or whatever, um, I don't remember the numbers, you have to watch his video, but there's a yellow wire that goes up to this voice box here. So you, you unsolder that one, and then you resolder them onto two different pins that are on there. And what that does is that corrects two problems. First, it corrects the, uh, the uh, misfiring LED here, so they both will always fire when they're supposed to. But the other part is, is when... It might take me a couple times to get this. There's a part where he only makes the music. Okay, he's going to be stubborn. Okay, that part right here. This should not light up when it's only playing the music, right? That should only light when he's talking. So when you do that little wiring mod in there, that fixes that problem too. Okay, so that's uh, what I did. I, I repositioned those wires that took care of that. Uh, the other mod is, is, is his walking action. So I'm going to set them down here to show you. Um, the problem is a really simple problem, and it's kind of funny that they didn't catch it from the factory, and he points it out. Uh, kudos for him for figuring this out, too, because it was a really simple solution. But these little wheels that you see on the bottom here, um, when they're uh, sliding forward, they're supposed to completely free wheel, right? And uh, you can feel this one that hasn't been modded yet when you... You guys hear that? Okay, it's it, it's hitting on some a little bit of plastic on the inside. So what you have to do is you, you take these battery covers off. There's two double A's in each foot. This little cover comes off with a screw, and then on the back side of it, there's two screws facing down. You take those out, and then you can open this up, and you got access to these wheels. Well, inside, they sit in a little cradle with a metal axle that runs across. And uh, on one side of the pocket, there's a little plastic burr. And what you have to do is pay attention to, uh, to the, you know, the side that you grind down. You don't want to grind down the wrong side because that, it is supposed to lock. See, when it goes in the forward position, it's supposed to completely lock. Because what he does is when he slides along the floor, the feet, when it's uh, being pushed, it unlocks. But when it's going to pull, it locks so that it can push the other one forward. It just shuffles along like that. And uh, so uh, you've got to get it to freewheel all the time. Otherwise, what happens is he won't walk straight. He'll start walking and he'll start catching one side or the other. And he'll start, you know, either going back and forth or just do a complete donut. And... Um, so you remove that little burr on each side, and then you get uh, the freewheeling. See, now this one I haven't done yet. You can hear that. This one I have done, and these are completely free. They don't make that noise, right? So this guy, when he walks, he walks perfectly straight now. Even on my rough garage floor, I'll show you a little uh, video of him walking in action here at the end. Um, had a little fun with that. But um, uh, So he walks really nice now. I mean, he makes a little bit of a curve after, you know, about seven or eight feet which that's totally acceptable. I mean, nothing's going to walk completely straight. You know, it doesn't have a gyro to control it. Uh, and my floor is really rough in here too. But the old way, he just like, he's all over the place. So that fixed that problem. Um, so then, um, like I mentioned, the lighting mod now, it changes and it fixes this little deal here where, you know, you don't have the, uh, when he's walking, he actually does one more sound effect, which is that short circuiting sound that he does when Morpheus gives him a weird order or something like that in the movie. He starts short-circuiting up in here. It makes that lighting effect up in there, and then it makes the sound. But when it does that, his his voice shouldn't, or his, you know, he shouldn't light up here. And so that fixes all of that. So that's that's a mod that's totally worth doing. Now, like I said, I totally took this one completely apart uh, so that I could repaint everything. And, um, you know, that, that was totally worth doing that. You could probably get away with not doing that if you, like, if you only want to mod the feet. Like, if yours happens to... Maybe you don't care if it lights up when it's making the sound, but you do want to fix that little, uh, you know, deal up in here. Uh, you can go in there and just change out those wires. But maybe if yours is working right and they, they are not, um, you know, doing that little thing where one's flashing and one's not, uh, you might get one that's like that. Then, then and you don't care that the, um, you know, that the that, that it lights up when um, the, uh, you know, it's making the other sounds besides the voice. Then all you have to do is modify the feet, and that takes about 20 minutes at the most to do that. So um, you'd be done with it that quick. But the other thing I'm going to show you here is that uh, you can see that he doesn't have the blue lighting uh, in his voice box when he when he talks like he does in the movie. 
So in order to fix that, you've got to take it apart pretty much. I suppose you could probably paint over this on the outside with some, uh, you know, mask it off real careful and then paint over the outside of this with some Tamiya transparent blue. That'd probably do the job. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to make the grill look really nice too. So when I took it completely apart, I popped that little lens out of there. And then on the front side of it here, I completely painted it with two coats of light blocking black. Uh, the regular black paint I use when I light block the inside of my models. Then I came back and uh, before I, you know, I, I scraped the excess paint out of there to get the lines back. But before I did that, I dusted over that with uh, this color here so it would match and everything. But then I came in here with this little wooden stick just like this and I just scraped on these little, you know, there's really nice little detailed uh, lines right there and I scraped in the middle in the low spot and I took the paint out of there. So now you can see we got this guy lighting up in blue like he's supposed to with a little bit of that grill work on there. And it looks way better than, than this, as you can see. So uh, took care of that problem, made that better. Now behind it, there are uh, there's a little board and it has uh, two on each side surface mounted SMDs in white. So I thought you know maybe it'll wash that out. So I I just dabbed a little bit of the blue transparent paint right on those SMDs too on that board and that you know made it look a little bit better, more rich in a blue instead of looking washed out. You know, if you light this these transparent parts with paint and then you put a bright white light behind them, they look kind of washed out. You've got to use a warm white, but if, unfortunately. Uh, these are not warm white. They're regular white. So, um, you know, but it looks really good the way it is now, the way we did it. So uh, the next thing was is I wanted to fix this little detail right here. You can see from the factory, it this this one on the left is just uh, open. It's just a clear part. And if you look careful, you can look right in there and see the green in the background, which is actually the control board that's behind it, which is kind of funny. Then over here, this is just sort of a semi-transparent orange. You can see right into it. And um, on the movie... This over here is done in like a silver, and it has a single pinpoint of light in the very middle of it. And then over here, this one has uh, four lights, and they kind of, you know, it does this kind of ratcheting thing. It, it, it circles, and two of the lights come out at a time. Well, obviously, we don't have the uh, ratcheting action here. But so what I did is I painted this uh, a couple coats of silver, and then I just took a drill bit and scribed a little bit in the center of it. And to get that little pinpoint of light coming through. Then over here, I painted this in gold because it's more supposed to be a brass or gold color on the uh, movie robot. And uh, then there's these little four little nubs that stick up. So I just scrape the paint off of those and you get like a little, you know, more like the pinpoints of light. Over on this one, it, you can see the one in the center. But um, one thing I'm going to say about this that I would do different the next time is that this little piece is actually a square part that sits on a little hinge. Uh, and, and so it can touch the switch behind it. Um, and it's all the same thing. I wish I would have painted the entire thing instead of just painting the, uh, the, the part that's showing. Because if you look close, you can see a little bit of ring of light coming around it where it's still leaking out of there. And I can't get in there close enough to do it now without getting paint all over this. So when I do a next one, I'm going to paint that whole part and that will look a lot better. You'll just see these little four specks of light. And I'll do the same thing on this side. This side has a little flange around it and uh, that's the clear part that you can still see leaking a little bit. I'll hit it again. You can see it leak a little bit around there and you can make that look perfect if you um, if you light block this whole thing, you know, the whole parts and uh, then do these little knockoffs on the four spots and that one in the center and it, it'll look great. I may get, I may be so picky I might, uh, it probably take me in like 20 or 30 minutes, I might crack this guy back open and go back in there and fix that at some point later but you know I learned a few things doing the first one. Now the hardest part, like I said, of taking it all the way apart is uh, doing the feet because you've got to, or I mean, you, you know, to do the feet, you only got to take the bottom panels off. But if you're going to fully disassemble them, there's cams and little levers in here that you got to pay close attention to how they go in. They're, they're mirrored and they only will go in a certain side to work. Then you got to hook it all back up to the linkage and his torso and everything. And you just got to pay attention. It's it's not that difficult. It's just tedious. You got to pay attention to what you're doing. I took pictures along the way so I could remind myself and go look, you know, how it was disassembled. And I paid special attention to how the wires were routed through it and everything. And uh, up here on this um, mouthpiece, if you're gonna if you're gonna take this head off of it and do the full thing, the <laughs> they've got it where the wires were pulled through uh, the little bracket that it sits in, and then they go down and connect down here somewhere where they're buried. You can't see it. So I had to unsolder the three wires from the board in order to get the board off and then uh, be able to pop the head off because you can't put the board through there. It's it's a little hole where the wire comes through. So that was a little bit tedious, but you just pay attention to where they were, 
I think the colored wire was in the center and there, there was a black wire on each side uh, and they must be grounds or whatever. So um, I put that back the same way when I put it back together and uh, you know a couple little tedious things like that but otherwise it was about 20 screws to take it all apart. I put those in a little bucket. You can tell which ones are which because they're different sizes and then a couple of them have washers on them and they go in certain spots. So um, I guess that's about it you guys. I mean I did... Uh, 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 probably about four hours worth of work to this and uh, it'll probably go a little faster the next time I do it So not bad at all a little afternoon and I actually really enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun I like tinkering with mechanical things and stuff like that anyway And then making it look so much better was totally worth it I mean this thing looks way better than uh, what it did, you know, what it does coming out of the box But you know even out of the box for $17 I think a lot of people are gonna be happy with it just the way it is But you know if you just want to have a little fun and make it make it a little bit better and um Especially with the paint and everything, that helps it a whole lot. Now, people have pointed out, you know, the feet are too big and the dome is not exactly perfect and stuff like that. But, I mean, to me, unless you're a totally diehard Robbie guy that knows every little detail, you'll never even notice. And uh, when you see the video at the end of this thing walking on the floor and making the noise and everything, it is just it is just so cool. I really like it. And even just displaying it on a shelf, you know, with the sounds and everything, it's just it's just awesome. So I had a lot of fun with it. I hope you guys will grab one of these. Um, and like I said, I'll have a, I'm going to mod a couple of these and, and maybe in a couple of weeks I'll have them done and I'll put them on my Facebook page and, uh, put them up for sale. And if somebody wants one, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. I have a pretty good idea now, but you know what I have to charge for it. It won't, it won't be too bad. It didn't take me that long and, uh, a little bit more than what the, the model cost right out of the box. But, uh, be, you know, uh, these are just really, really neat. And I'm glad they came out with it. Glad I found out about it because I know they're going to disappear uh, and once these things disappear, you know, then they go on eBay and then they're like $300, you know, a year from now. So uh, I hope you guys grab one. And don't forget they have the Iron Giant, too, if you're interested in that one. Maybe they'll do a few different ones. Uh, maybe they'd do a nice B9 in the same scale and everything. That would be really cool. Uh, but uh, I had a lot of fun with this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, shout out to uh, Robot Hut there. Good on you, fellow, for putting out all the information on this. This is uh, something that a lot of guys keep secret and all that. And... Uh, you know, it's just really cool that he did that. That's what the hobby's all about. That's, you know, that's why I uh, do what I do, too. I mean, it's all about helping people out. I wouldn't be able to do all this stuff and never would have even known about it if it wasn't for that. So, appreciate that. You guys take care. We'll catch up with you in a few days. I'll be back with the uh, uh, work on the actual Polar Lights model kit. And uh, and we'll be going from there. It'll be about a week and a half before I get the control board, but I'm working on some of the photo etch and stuff like that. So, I'll wrap this up with a quick look at this guy in action on the floor. Hope you enjoy that. And uh, just imagine the, uh, you know, the uh, Forbidden Planet landscape in the background. And this thing would look really cool if you could do a, a green screen or something like that. And uh, But anyway, enjoy that, guys. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Take care and happy modeling, everyone.